Hi, welcome to a tutorial video on how to use Gantt charts, a simple and free access to a great visual tool. My name is Paul Dean and I'm a continuous improvement practitioner with over 25 years of experience. A Gantt chart is a very simple tool to help you in project management. In fact, it's the most powerful in tracking a project. So Microsoft had realized this and spent billions of dollars in creating and servicing one of the most prolific tools, Microsoft Project Enterprise. And this is fundamentally a Gantt chart. But I'm going to show you how to get the benefits out of this tool without having to have a PhD in Microsoft Project. I've been managing small and large projects for over 20 years and I've also been teaching and coaching others to manage projects. I'm sure you've heard of Gantt charts but just quickly to recap. This is a tool with horizontal bars representing steps, tasks, phases or activities across the time scale. It visualizes the whole project and allows ease of determining the sequence and the timing of the steps. It shows timelines of all phases and tasks as well as the relationships between each of these. So we're spending a lot of time and resources undertaking projects. So we need to be efficient in order to be successful. I've learned that there are some simple methods and tools that will make you and your projects achieve the intended outcome. And the Gantt chart is one of the easiest tools to access and I'm going to show you how to create a simple version. There are free templates available from Microsoft Office which I'll show you how to download and modify to suit. And by the end of this I'm confident you'll be able to create your own Gantt chart and apply what you've learned here today to be more successful at managing projects. So firstly, what is project management? By definition, it's the process of leading a team's activities to achieve goals within a specified time. There are important considerations to keep in mind, scope, time, quality, budget and resources. And a project is distinguishable from managing normal work because the objectives are locked into a finite time scale. And this framework allows a team to be more successful. It aims to produce a complete body of work complying with the objective and it's a short-term endeavour solely designed to fulfil intended objectives. Projects should be divided into phases. This is a logical framework for tracking progress, providing structure and predictability for the team. It allows a sponsor to toll gate the project's progression. And according to PM Bock, which is the world's leading organisation on project management, the most common five phases are one, initiation, two, planning, three, execution, four, control and monitoring, and finally five, project closure. Now, if you're undertaking a Six Sigma project designed around resolving a problem, then the five phases will be one, define, two, measure, three, analyze, four, improve, five, control, or the acronym DMAIC. So let's get into Gantt charts. To simply set up a Gantt chart, we need to do four things. Divide all the tasks into components, delegate people responsible to these tasks, assign a start and finish date, and finally determine the relationship between these tasks. There is a set of simple Gantt chart templates freely available from Microsoft Office. The website is templates.office.com and in the search box we type Gantt charts to find the template style that suits you and then simply click and download. So I'm going to show you how to undertake this exercise. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into templates.office.com and in the search engine and type in Gantt and press enter and that will give me all the templates available in most of them are Excel and the one that is my go-to Gantt chart is this project plan. I'm going to click on that it gives me the details of this particular template and because it's in Excel it's easy to manipulate I click on the download button and it's going to download a copy. So once that file is downloaded, I'm going to open the file 
But the first thing I must do to make it easy to manipulate is I'm going to scroll up to the top and I'm going to click the Enable Editing button. Now this particular Excel is full of comments and various cells. I won't go through them in detail, but they're self-explanatory. So the first one is the timing, which is the horizontal bars and how long they are. Then the second is the name of the project, which we can type into that particular cell, V1. Then a list of activities. And this is the tasks or steps or phases the plan start is when we plan to start that activity. As we go through, the plan duration is how long that activity will go through. And that determines the width of the bar. Then as we go through the project, the actual start date is when we actually started that task. The actual duration, how long it actually took. And then we can progress by showing the percent complete which we can just type in uh, our various percentages. The period highlight is this particular uh, vertical line and it shows us where we're up to in the project. So we can select particularly, so week five shows us week five against all the actual plan activities. first thing I'll do is I'm going to insert a column and I'm just going to put owner. So we've got tasks and we need to have owners assigned to those tasks. I'm just going to format it to make it look uh, good. So once I've done that, then I can start assigning the owners to the particular task by just typing in simple Excel sheet. I'm going to call this um, a phase. So this will be phase one. Remember, I talked before about the different phases in the projects. And then I'm going to have all these activities assigned to the phases. They're all going to start week one. Then I'm going to have phase two. That um, I'm going to have all these activities assigned to phase two. Now I want to make sure that as I modify these, you can see the horizontal bars change accordingly. As I progress, I can change the actual start date and the actual duration. I can also change the uh, percentage as well. Now I want to make sure that the relationship between the phases are shown. In this case, phase two has to start after phase one, and phase three has to start after phase two. So I'm going to manipulate these particular dates to accordingly and that will adjust the horizontal bars. Now as the project progresses we can change the actual start and actual duration. And as we progress I'm going to change the percentages so as we go through these tasks, we can assign the different dates and as we complete those, we can assign the percentages. And as you can see, the horizontal bars change accordingly. I just want to manipulate this to show that the tasks all don't occur at the same time. And next thing I can do is just show you this period highlight again. If I want to select week four, it shows me that all these particular actions are on time. Maybe if I go to week 10, I can show you these particular actions are, are behind because they should be complete according to the timeline. So I'm just going to show you how to use the same template for a DMIOC problem solving project. So I've used the same template and I've pre-populated it. Now this particular project is being complete. As you can see, it's fully complete, but I've also enabled some of the Excel functions like color coding the cells to differentiate between the different phases. Another project I'm working on at the moment is the Crimper Straight Line project using the same template. I just want to highlight this period highlight 
at the moment we're in week eight. So if I highlight week eight, I can actually see what are the tasks that are behind schedule and what needs some activity. So that's how we use the same template for different project designs to enable us to produce a Gantt chart. So this brings me to the end of this tutorial, a simple and free access to a great visual tool, Gantt Charts. Over the years, I found that a very simple tool like a Gantt chart can help you significantly not just managing, but being successful in your projects. I encourage you to look out for other tutorials along the same topic that will aid you in your project management journey. Thanks for watching.